to. Or the final round. Uh, last time I was in the lead going into the final round and I stayed in front, so... Well, I'm sure you're hoping to be in the same position today, so good luck to you. And uh, finally, we have Bob here, Bob Thompson. Welcome back, Bob. Now, you're from Stoke-on-Trent and you were in the very last heat. Yes, and very pleased to have got this far and haven't had to wait too long to come back. Good, well, I wish you every success. Let's play Timekeepers. <laughs> Well, you all know the story because you've been here before. You begin with five minutes on your clock. Wrong answers or a failure to buzz in will, of course, cost you ten seconds throughout the quiz. And the contestant with the most time remaining at the end of the next four rounds will be joining me to take that March Against Time challenge. And that will be your chance to getting a place in the grand final. Just to remind you, the big prize on offer, well, I'm delighted to say that Richard Price, he's selected the prize for us. He's uh, from the Antiques Roadshow, one of the watches and clocks experts, and he's here to tell us all about it. So, Richard, tell us more. Thanks, Bill. Well... The grand finalist of Timekeepers will be getting this lovely French carriage clock, very much in the English style. The important thing about this is the fusion chain, basically a constant speed drive. It's a lovely dial, and on the back of the movement, we have the stamp of RED, a good French factory. The case, of course, gilt and silvered. I'd insure it for about 2,200, and I think that all the competitors deserve the very best of luck. Thank you very much, Richard, and uh, Richard will be with us tomorrow to present the prize. Mm. Well, now, let's begin, as always, with the word clock, and here it is. And, of course, we need a few words, and here they are. And it's the word combinations which will make up the answers to the questions I'll give you in a moment. And then what you have to do is convert the answer into time, with the hours first, followed by the minutes. You're all experts at this. So let me give you an example, just uh, if you're joining us for the first time. If I was to say two rhyming lines... Then, from that example, the answer from this clock would be 7.05, giving us couplet. Coup and let together, but if you combine the two words, it, of course, gives us couplet. So it's not that immediately obvious. Just to remind you, timekeepers, if you hesitate, you're going to hear this sound. Even if you think you haven't hesitated, I'm warning you, he's pretty sharp on that buzzer. So good luck to you. Fingers on your buzzers, off we go. Speech can sound ah. like... Bob? 10.15. Yes, fine. Slurred at 10.15. Very quick. Short-legged little marsupial. Ah. Steve? 11.25. That's uh, a hesitation, so I can hand it now to Bob. 11.30. 11.30, and I think you were wrong as well, Steve, weren't you? Oh, you said 11.25, wombat at 11.30. This complexion usually denotes poor health. 9.20. Ernie. Ernie, you're right, at 9.20. That's what timekeepers look like when they're facing the 24-hour clock, looking a little pallid. 9.20. Meaningful body language achieved only with the eyes. <laughs> All out of time. It's 510, winking. Portable storage platform. 95. Oh, no. Yes, 905. Pallet. Pal and let together, giving us a coarse pallet. Babies must learn how to cope with this sort of food without all their teeth. Steve? 12.20. Correct. 12.20. Solid. And now let's lose those words because you're getting pretty used to that clock face. So, there they go. Let's change the clock face. New set of words now. Fingers on your buzzers. Here we go. Vegetable associated with Halloween. Bob? 3 o'clock. Correct. Pumpkin at 3 o'clock. Pop stars are used to being thus treated in a crowd. Yes, Steve? 7.10. No, that's wrong. And there was also hesitation, Bob? 8.10. Correct, 8.10. Bad luck, Steve. You're nearly there, but you just trip up on the hour there. 8.10, mobbed, mob and bed. Not pleasant to handshake. 9.20. Um, 9.20, clammy is correct. Three more questions to go. Hinder part of a horse's thigh. Hinder part of a horse's thigh. <laughs> 7 o'clock, Gaskin. She got a bad attack of this following her fish supper. Steve? 6.05. Yes, salmonella at 6.05. Salmon and Ella together there. An elusive quality which may be moral or sinister. <coughs> That's not easy to spot either. 11.25, overt and one gives us overtone. That's it. That brings us to the end of the first round. Let's look at those scores now. We have Steve with 3 minutes and 20, Ernie with 3 minutes and 30, and in the lead is Bob with 3 minutes and 40.
Well, even after the first round, it's proving to be quite a close playoff at this stage. Now, here's good news for you, because if you get a right answer, you're out for the next question. You can save some time. Wrong answers or a failure to buzz in will, of course, cost you 10 seconds. Good luck with this. We've got 12 questions for you. More bashing of the buzzers here. Who was the wartime Deputy Prime Minister who Churchill described as a ah, sheep in... Steve? Clement Attlee. Correct. So you can relax now. Ernie and Bob, this is your question. In Russia, a granny and a triangular headscarf both share the name Babushka. But who hit the 1980 ah, top... Bob? Kate Bush. Yes, correct. With the song, of course, Babushka. Which former US general announced in November 1995 he would not be putting ah, his name... Ernie? Colin Powell. Correct. Not putting his name forward for presidential nomination. Stephen Bob now playing for this next question. In the USA, Juno is the state capital of Alaska. Ah. Steve? Oh, you were going to say Alaska, weren't you? I was. Well, let me continue with the question now. But when Alaska became the 49th state in 1959, which state became the 50th? Ah. Bob? Hawaii. Correct. Used as a refrigerant, solid carbon dioxide is more, known more commonly as dry ah. ice. Sorry, Ernie. Shall I carry on now? You're going to say dry ice, weren't you? But in Iceland, what name is given to their 60-member parliament? <coughs> Steve? Aetheling. What did you say? Aetheling. Yeah, well, I'll accept that. You're nearly there. All thing is uh, the correct uh, way of saying it, but yeah, I'll give you that. Missing You and The Lady in Red were hits of the 80s for Krista Burr, but who released a 1995 album entitled Soprano in Red? You're all out of time. Bob, what are you going to say out of interest? Simply red. Oh, uh, you, you were wrong. Red. Leslie Garrett is the answer. Uh, let's have a look at the scores now at this stage. We can see that Ernie has two minutes and 50. Steve has three minutes, and in the lead at this stage is Bob with three minutes and 20. In October 1995, guest of honour Newt Gingrich turned up two hours late for the Washington party to celebrate the 70th birthday of which baroness? <coughs> Steve. Mrs Thatcher. Yes, Baroness Thatcher. Mystic Nativity and the Birth of Venus were painted by Sandro Botticelli, but actress Sandra Goff plays which Emmerdale character? <coughs> the answer is Nellie Dingle. So, Ernie and Bob lose ten. Steve back in play now. All playing together for this. Jura, Valet, and Bern are three of the cantons to be found in ah. s Bob. Switzerland. Switzerland. I'm sorry, let me continue now. They are to be found in Switzerland, but what Latin name is to be found on the postage stamps of <coughs> Switzerland? Steve. Helvetia. Correct. Three questions to go now. Who became Poet Laureate in 1984? <coughs> Bob. Ted Hughes. Correct. You're making up for the last mistake. Which American rock musician, now dead, said... <coughs> Steve. Jerry Garcia. No, let me continue now, so you lose ten. Ernie, you can listen to all of this question now. Which American rock musician, now dead, said most rock journalism is people who can't write interviewing people who can't talk for people who can't read. Elvis Presley. No, Frank Zappa. <laughs> so you lose ten. Final question now. In 1626, which island of New York was bought from Native Americans for $24? Ah. Ernie. Staten Island. No, you're wrong. Ah. So, Steve? Manhattan. Correct. You are right. And that brings us to the end of round two. Let's look at those scores now. And we can see that Ernie has one minute and 50. Bob has two minutes and 40. And just ahead by 10 seconds is Steve now with 2 minutes and 50. <laughs> We're all looking very menacing at the moment. Very serious, poised and ready to do a bit of staring, of course, at the 24-hour word clock. So let's have a look at it. Here it is. And if I give you an example, this football club's players are known as the Toffee Men. From that question, the clue from this 24-hour word clock would be 2020 giving us Everton, ever and ton. And uh, if we look at all the numbers on the clock, they refer to the hours on the 24-hour clock, but of course, if the minute hand is on the 4 or 16, then we read that as 20. Just to remind you, when you respond, will you please give me the time followed by the word combination. Let's look at those scores again, and we can see that, uh, Ernie, at the moment, you're trailing with one minute and 50, so you're going to go first, get it over and done with. Two minutes will uh, be given to you, and you have to answer six questions within those two minutes, and the time remaining after that time will be added to your score. So here's a good chance for you to catch up. Wrong answers or a pass will, of course, cost you ten seconds. You ready, Ernie? Yeah. Good. Your time will start as soon as I've asked you the first question. Scoring one is good news for your opposition. Twenty-two thirty on goal. Correct. A vast area of marshland and sedges in South Florida. Everglades. 
Everglades, seven. 725 Everglades. Correct. He was Secretary of State, Chief Whip, and Chairman of the Conservative Party before becoming a peer. 815 White Law. Correct. Goose or duck cooked in its own fat and stored in the fat to preserve it. Pass. Goose or duck cooked in its own fat and stored in the fat to preserve it is nine o'clock, giving us confit. It's a pleasure, but it's tinged with pain and sorrow. Ah! Eleven thirty, bittersweet. Correct. Strong winds make grains of dry snow in the air indistinguishable from the snow on the ground. Eight fifteen, white out. Correct. Stop the clock. <laughs> Very good, Ernie. Thirty six remaining, and uh, so I'm going to add that to your time now, and that gives you two minutes and twenty six. Righto, Bob. It's your turn now. Your time will start as soon as I've asked you the first question. Birds freely offer this service at the break of day. Dawn chorus, uh, dawn. 1900 hours dawn chorus. Correct. This blockhead had a hit with his rhythm stick. Ian Dury. 22, 25 Ian Dury. Correct. The name that Malcolm Campbell gave to both his car and his boat. Bluebird. S seven, 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 ten Bluebird. Correct. London thoroughfare formerly associated with the British press. Fleet Street. Fleet Street. 23, 20 Fleet Street. Correct. Although it's poles apart, it both attracts and repels. Magnet. 21, 10 magnet. Correct. This Alan loved Juliet Stevenson truly, madly, deeply from beyond the grave. Pass. This Alan loved Juliet Stevenson truly, madly, deeply from beyond the grave. You pass on that. The answer's 10.05, Rickman. Stop the clock. Bob, you just tripped up on that last one, you pass on that, but you've still got 58 seconds remaining. That's a very good time. We'll add that now to your clock, and that now gives you, Bob, three minutes and 38. Steve, it's your turn now, and study this clock carefully at home because there'll be a question for you on this clock after this. Steve, good luck. Usually found in the car boot, but undesirable round the waist. Spare tyre, 11. Oh, 05, spare tyre. Correct. Get lost in the fog, and it may be cold before you reach the table. Pass. Get lost in the fog, and it may be cold before you reach the table. You pass on that. The answer is 2125 Pea Soup. David Lynch tale that asked who killed Laura Palmer. Twin Peaks. 10. 1020 Twin Peaks. Correct. English Earl and Portrait Photographer. So can you repeat that? English Earl and Portrait oh. Photographer. Litchfield. Pass. Pass. English Earl and portrait photographer, the answer's 615, Snowden. He made an appearance with Hannah and her sisters. Woody Allen. Four o'clock, Woody Allen. Correct. American Benny, nicknamed the King of Swing. Goodman. Five, fifteen, Goodman. Correct. Stop the clock. <laughs> Steve. 33 seconds to add to your time, and uh, so that now gives you 3 minutes and 23. Let's look at the scores now. Ernie has 2 minutes and 26. Uh, Steve has 3 minutes and 23, and Bob is our leader now with 3 minutes and 38. <laughs> well, uh, we'll have a look at uh, Steve's clock again, because, uh, as I promised, there's a question for you there. So let's look at it. There it is. Your question is this. Wimbledon finals are fought here. Is it A, 18-10? B, 1120, or C, 810. If you think you know the answer, the number to phone is 0891 114499. The lines are open until midnight tonight, and the winner will be drawn at random from the correct entries and receive this digital personal organiser. The five runners-up will each receive the prize. Timekeeper's watch. The question for you once again. Wimbledon finals are fought here. Is it A, 1810, B, 1120, or C, 810? And don't forget, the lines are open until midnight, so why not give us a ring after the show? Good luck. Well, at the end of the next round, we'll know who will be competing for a place in the grand final. But before we get there, I thought you'd like to see this and tell you that the runners-up will receive this wonderful timekeeper's hourglass, all right? So just to make you a little happier if you feel you're losing at this stage. Now, of course, anybody could win, 
Timekeepers is so unpredictable at this stage, and we can see that at the moment uh, we have Ernie, who's trailing at the moment. Ernie, you have every chance now of catching up. You can steal some time, because for every correct answer you get, 10 seconds can be stolen away from Bob or Steve and added to your own time. And of course, for you, Bob, you've really got to hold on to your time. Good luck. At the end of this, we'll know who will be joining me for the March Against Time Challenge. Who said I did a very bad thing on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno in 1995? Steve. Few grand. Correct. So ten from? Bob. The Amish people are Protestants from Europe who in the 18th and 19th century settled in which American... <coughs> Steve? Pennsylvania. Correct. Ten from? Bob. What did Robert Oppenheimer and other scientists <coughs> develop? Bob? The atomic bomb. Correct. Ten from? Steve. Which British newspaper made its first appearance on October the 7th, 1986? <coughs> Steve. Today. No. Lose ten. The Independent. Who plays Jane Lucas in the BBC comedy Agony Again? <coughs> Bob? Maureen Lippmann. Correct. Ten from? Steve. On which ocean is the West Mexican resort of Acapulco situated? Uh, Bob. Pacific. Correct. Ten from? Steve. Name the disease that both Ian Jury and Franklin Roosevelt <coughs> suffered from. Bob. Polio. Correct. Ten from? Steve. Which snooker player born in Wales in 1932? <coughs> Steve. Terry Griffiths. No. Ray Reardon is the answer I'm looking for, so you lose ten. What is a Trisky decophobia? <coughs> yes, Bob? The number 13. He's afraid of it. Correct. Ten from? Uh, Steve. What was the signature tune of band leader Glenn Miller? <coughs> Steve. In the mood. No, Moonlight Serenade, so lose ten. Opened in 1978, the London Central Mosque is a feature of which park? <coughs> Steve. Regent's Park. Correct. Ten from? Bob. Roman Herzog was elected president of which country in May 1994? <coughs> Steve. Israel. No, Germany. Lose ten. And uh, Bob is our leader at this stage. Which British novelist wrote City of Spades and Absolute <coughs> Beginners? Steve. Colin McInnes. Correct. Ten from? Bob. What is the name of the minority tribe in Rwanda which has almost been wiped <coughs> out in... Yes, Steve? Tutsu. Correct. Ten from? Bob. Harold Pinter and Michael Caine both attended which East End of London school? <coughs> yes, Bob? Hackney. Correct. Ten from? Steve. Which East Anglian city was the first in Britain to use the postcode? <coughs> yes, Bob? Norwich. Correct. Ten from? Steve. The airline companies BEA and BOAC merged to form which new <coughs> company? Ernie. British Airways. Correct. Ten from? Bob. Which type of filmmaking are William Hanna and Joseph <coughs> Barbera? Steve? Cartoons. Correct. Ten from? Bob. What was Thomas Edison's middle name? <coughs> Bob. Alvar. Correct. Ten from? Ernie. Ex-footballer Edson Arantes. <coughs> Do yes, Bob. Pelé. Correct. Ten from? Steve. Which high-speed French train began <coughs> service in... Yes, Steve? The shuttle? No, the TGV, so lose ten. Which organisation did Pakistan join in 1947, Burma in 1948 and Israel in 1940... <coughs> Steve? The United Nations. Correct. Ten from? Bob. Of the two main political parties in Israel, Labour is one. What is it, Bob? Likud. Correct. Ten from? Ernie. Who played the singing detective in the television series? Steve. Michael Gamble. Correct. Ten from? Bob. What name is shared by the highest mountain in Canada and an Irish double winner? It's Bob. McKinley. No, Logan. Lose ten. Which comedian walked out of the West End play's cellmates? Bob. Stephen Fry. Correct. Ten from? Steve. In the late 60s, which American movement was founded by Huey Newton and Bobby Seale? Steve. Black Panthers. Correct. Ten from? Bob. In which city was the athlete Colin Jackson born? <coughs> Steve. Cardiff. Correct. Ten from? Bob. Who still holds the lead? What does the phrase al fresco mean when eating? <coughs> Bob. Out of doors. Yes, correct. Ten from? Steve. Gretsch, Hofner and Ibanez are all famous makes of what? <coughs> Bob. Guitar. Correct. Ten from? Steve. Who was the illustrator of A.A. Milne's Winnie the Pooh story? <coughs> Steve. Jeffrey. <coughs> Well, I was asking you who is the illustrator of A.A. Milne's Winnie the Pooh stories. The answer is Ernest Shepherd. And, uh, well, he ran away with it somewhat. I saw Ernie hitting his buzzer, but Bob was always ahead, and he's our winner today with 3 minutes and 48. <laughs> uh, bad luck. Steve, you were really fighting against <clears throat> Bob. And, actually, there's not a lot between you and uh, Ernie. You both fought very well. Well, Ernie, actually, I saw you trying, but you just weren't getting in there on time. But thank you very much for joining us. Uh, as I say, you go away with our timekeeper's hourglass, and what's more, you still have a, a timekeeper's watch as well. So thank you very much, Steve and Ernie. Congratulations on getting to this playoff. Well done. Thank you. Okay. Well, Bob, that was a decisive victory. Join me now for the March Against Time Challenge.
So, Bob, you have one minute in which to answer 15 questions. For every correct answer you give me, I'll give you back 10 seconds. You know what it's all about. You've been here before. So there's your timer. And there we can see at the top 15 questions, each worth 10 seconds, ready to be added to your time. Now, you need to get above one minute and four to guarantee yourself a place in the final. I think by the way you performed just a few moments ago, you probably <laughs> could do that. OK, good luck to you, Bob. Here we go. In 1995, the boyhood home of which legendary pop star was purchased by the National Trust? Paul McCartney. Correct. What is the actual southernmost point on the British mainland? Lizard Point. Correct. The only difference between Terry Wogan and the M1 is that you can turn off the M1. Is the quip attributed to which royal? Prince Charles. No, the Duke of Edinburgh. In 1985, Harrod Store was purchased by which Egyptian brothers? Al Fayed. Correct. What was the name of the famous yacht on which Robert Maxwell made his last journey? Lady Helene. Correct. Ganymede, one of the largest satellites in the solar system, is a moon of which planet? Jupiter. Correct. Which British entertainer made his debut as a mighty atom in 1942 and later appeared in the film Bedknobs and Broomsticks? Bruce Forsyth. Correct. Which insect is known as the Devil's Darning Needle? A dragonfly. Correct. Which battleship was the subject of a 1925 Eisenstein film? Potemkin. Correct. Anthony Aloysia Sinjon with the partially assumed names of which radio comedian? Tony Hancock. Correct. On weather maps, what name is given to a line linking points with the same atmospheric temperature? Isobar. Isa Bar. No, Isotherm. In which US state was the 1994 Football World Cup final held? California. Correct. Which Czech writer who died in 1924 said it's often safer to be in chains than to be free? Pass. Franz Kafka, which King of Greece went into exile in 1967 and was formally deposed in 1973. Constantine. Correct. What were Gilbert and Sullivan's first names? Pass. William and Arthur. Stop the clock. <laughs> Bob, you've done it. <laughs> one minute and 37. Poor old Eric Carden there at the bottom of one minute and four. You've knocked him out of the grand final. So I think, quite honestly, you ought to do the honourable thing and apologise. Go on. I'm sorry, Eric. Quite right, too. Anyway, now let's have a look and see those three faces who are appearing in the grand final tomorrow. Now, everybody tomorrow will start on equal footing. Well done. Now, whatever happens, don't miss tomorrow because, of course, it is the grand final. See you then. Well, I guess I can't win them all. Funny. You don't sound like a man who's about to earn $300,000. But I was counting on that plus $50,000 for getting the ransom back. You're all bad, aren't you? I do what I can. <laughs> Where are we going? Well, first we're going to pick up a bag of money, and then I might just pop the old question. Oh, I know that old question. Your place or mine? That was Banachek's last case this series. Next week at 2 o'clock, there's Pebble Mill. Sunday night, Ruby Wax joins camera, crew, and super babe Pamela Anderson. In my mind, I think I'm really hot until I look at a picture and see myself in and I go, oh, geez, I can't believe that. Think about what I go through. But Ruby's got what it takes. I'm going to be in the real day watch. If I make it to the top, I'll always remember you. Ruby Wax meets Pamela Anderson Sunday at 10 on BBC One. Walking on water and sailing without sight. How do they do it? Faces from the grave, solving forgotten crimes. How is it done? And Born Free, coming to the rescue of lions in Africa. How do they do that? For the answers, join Eamon and Jenny, Wednesday at 8 on BBC One. Now on BBC One, the grand final of Timekeepers with Bill Dodd.
very much. Well, here we are. It's the grand final of Timekeepers. Now, since the beginning of this, our second series, we've seen 99 contestants battle it out in the hope of appearing in this afternoon's grand final. Well, they've now won their heats, they've won their playoffs, and now each one of them is hoping to become the overall winner of Timekeepers. They're nervous, and believe it or not, so am I. So let's get on with it and meet our three grand finalists. <laughs> Plus, congratulations. Welcome back. Our Doncaster contestant and uh, our winner on Wednesday. Yeah, I'm just happy to be here and I hope the best man wins. Well, my sentiments entirely. Best of luck to you. Thanks. Bob, here you are again. Again, yes. <laughs> From Stoke-on-Trent. Now, yesterday was your lucky day. Uh, are, are you pleased to be here? Oh, I'm delighted, thanks. It's a great show to be on. Well, that's very nice of you to say that. And uh, it's very good to see you today, so the best of luck to you. Thank you. And Hugh, Hugh Davis from Virginia Water in Surrey, our third finalist this afternoon. Welcome back. How are you feeling, all right? Yep, fine. Good. Feeling confident? Uh, hardly, but with this opposition. Yeah, well, yeah, tough opposition. But anyway, as far as I'm concerned, you're all geniuses. It's amazing. Congratulations for getting here. Now, let's play the grand final. <laughs> well, I know we're all in a state of nerves, so I'd better remind you of the rules. You all begin with five minutes on your clock, and you have to hold on to that time. And, of course, wrong answers or a failure to buzz in will cost you ten seconds. And it's the contestant with the most time remaining who will be our big winner of the series. And of course, winning this wonderful prize. Yes, we've been talking about it throughout the series. It's the lovely antique carriage clock and Richard Price has been telling us all about it. And he's gonna be with us to present the prize at the end of the show. So let's get on with another famous clock, shall we? It's the word clock and here it is. Of course, we need the words. And there they are and it's the word combinations which will make up the answers to the questions I'll give you in a moment. And what you have to do is convert that answer into time with the hours first followed by the minutes. Let me give you an example. If I was to say a festive drinking bout, then the answer would be 7.30, wassail. Okay, was and sail together. Remember, you're used to this by now. No hesitations are allowed. If you do hesitate, you'll hear this sound. And that means, of course, you'll lose 10 seconds and the question can then be handed to your opponents. Here we go then. Good luck. This is the, the last time you'll have to face uh, <coughs> This word clock, all right? Nibble these on the Costa ah. Brava. Hugh. 9.10. Correct, that's a good start. Tapas at 9.10. No one wants to be as dead as this. Ah. Russ. 3.15. Oh, that's a hesitation. Ah. So Hugh jumps in. 3.15 is right. Do and do gives us dodo. It would take more than this to make your argument watertight. Ah. Bob. 8 o'clock. Correct, sealant at 8. Catch on to this natural fibre. Catch ah. on, Hugh. 11.25. Correct. Cotton at 11.25. You'll need a special pass for access to all of these. 4.10. 4.10, yes. Areas. R and as together gives us areas. And finally, for this word clock, dancing display of underwear. A dancing display of underwear. Yes, Hugh. 1.5. Correct. Can can at 1.05. Let's lose those words now because you're getting very familiar with that clock. And. We'll change the clock face. We'll have a new set of words now. And here they are, fingers on your buzzers. The sort of remark you regret when it's too late. Ah! Hugh. 1.30. Correct. You're very quick. It's tactless at 1.30. Aerial manoeuvre more likely to create panic than in-flight entertainment. Ah! Hugh. 10.20. Yes, tailspin at 10.20. How does he do it? A rather thin crumpet. Ah! Hugh. 10.15. What did you say? 11.15. 11.15 is correct. At, uh, there we go. Pikelet. Melon-shaped fruit ah, with orange. 5.25. Yeah, poor poor at 5.25. Bob and Russ trying to get a look in. Common sense tells you this is French for we. Ah, yes. 8.10. Yeah, well spotted, Russ. That's a naus, or as in French, uh, you would say nu, meaning we. Series of jokes suitable for shouting through the front door. Ah, 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock, knock knock is the answer. <coughs> and that brings us to the end of the first round in this grand final. Let's look at those scores. We can see that Bob has three minutes and 10, Russ ahead with three minutes and 20, and Hugh, <coughs> very good, four minutes and 30. Well, here, of course, as you know, if you get a right answer, you're out for the next question, so you save time. Wrong answers or a pass will, of course, cost you 10 seconds. 12 questions for you. Fingers on your buzzers. Here we go. In 1951, Sir Bernard Lovell became director of Jodrell Bank Experimental Station, 
but his namesake, Jim Lovell, was played ah. in the... Russ? He was an astronaut on the, on the uh, Apollo 13 That's space mission. That's not the answer I'm looking for. Let me continue now with the question. But his namesake, Jim Lovell, was played in the 1995 ah. film Apollo... Tom Hanks. Yes, Hugh, you're right. We were looking for the name of the actor there, Tom Hanks. So, bad luck, Russ. Hugh, you're out of play. What was the name of the first dog in space? Ah. Bob. Liker. Yes, another space question. Liker is correct. The world is due to be destroyed on the 22nd of December, 2012, according to the astrology of which ancient ah. Russ? Nostradamus. No, so, Hugh. Armageddon. It's an ancient people we're looking for, and the answer is Mayans. And so.